Before Stephen A. Smith would tell a handful of players, mostly in the NFL, to stay off the weed. Uh, say, yeah. do it again. Please. Stay off the weed. It's stay off the weed. And you can't stay off the weed. Before Stephen A. Smith would be known for constantly debating his former co host Skip Bayless on pretty much everything and anything he could. I, I'm an idiot because somehow, some way, I worked with you every day for the last three years, and there are times where you, you, I'm years, still so amazed. Ahead. I'm still amazed by the, the stuff that comes out of your mouth. Before Stephen A. Smith would become one of the most popular figures in the sports world, known for his personality on both First Take and his own radio show, The Stephen A. Smith Show. You inundated him with a bunch of political, bureaucratic nonsense that most people in this position should never have to deal with. Love him or hate him, Stephen A. Smith has become a polarizing figure in the sports world. From growing up in Queens, New York to getting a college basketball scholarship and eventually becoming one of the most talked about sports analysts out there, Stephen A. has made quite a name for himself. Starting off writing for his college paper calling for his coach to retire before eventually working for the Philadelphia Inquirer and becoming the most well known host of ESPN's first take, Smith is quite often talked about for using the phrase blasphemous to describe plays that to Smith, seemed completely out of whack, calling Aaron Rodgers a bad man, and of course, his hatred for the Dallas Cowboys, which I could easily get behind, because they suck. Go Eagles. In fact, someone even made a song about Smith's hatred for the Cowboys. Mediocre team and Big D. <laughs> That's what makes this funny. What's going on guys, my name is Jared Bronstein and welcome back to Before They Were Famous. In our last few videos, we covered the 2K GOAT Chris Smoove as per your requests, so we figured you guys wanted more coverage on the basketball world. We've done a ton of videos on basketball players and players who just got drafted, so check out all of those videos. Keep sending your requests in the comments down below as always. And today's trivia question is, what soap opera did Smith make his acting debut on? You guys gotta let me know in the comments down below. I'll answer the question at the end of this video, but let's get on with the show. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Stephen Anthony Smith was born on October 14th, 1967 in the Bronx, New York. He is the second youngest of six children with four older sisters and a younger brother, Basil, who passed away in a car accident in 1992. Smith also has a half brother from his father's side. Smith's parents are from the St. Thomas Virgin Islands with his mother, Janet Smith, working 16 hour days, seven days a week to provide for the family while he was young. Smith's dad, whose name was unobtainable, was believed to manage a hardware store, but was also known to be an outstanding basketball and baseball star who was drafted by the Giants back in the 1950s according to Stephen himself. Although Smith was born in the Bronx, he grew up in Queens, more specifically Hollis. Smith would attend Thomas Edison High School in Queens where he would graduate before going to the Fashion Institute of Technology for a year. Growing up, Smith would be an avid sports junkie watching football and baseball religiously while playing basketball in the New York streets. His childhood hobby of playing ball would eventually lead to a scholarship at Winston-Salem State University which would be the reason for his transfer after just one year at the Fashion Institute. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. Apparently, Smith is actually a pretty good basketball player. I mean, if he got a scholarship, he couldn't have been all that bad. I did try to find the man's college stats and unfortunately couldn't really find anything. Granted, he played back in the 80s, but still, it shouldn't be that hard to find some stats on the guy. It is fair to say he had a busted knee, so I don't know how many games he actually played, but Skip Bayless, his former co-host, was able to find some stats, and apparently he actually wasn't that great of a player. More specifically, at least according to Skip himself, he shot too many threes and missed a lot of them. While, while playing at Winston-Salem State, yes. while trying to play, trying you, to play. You, you shot too many threes, this, yeah. you, you missed too many threes, uh -oh. which doesn't surprise me at all because now you talk too much <laughs> and, and you miss way too many points. However, his college basketball career would be the birth of his journalism and sports broadcasting career. While playing for the team, Smith wrote one article about his coach at the time, Clarence Big House Gaines, who Smith explained was not only a coach, but a father figure 
and a huge inspiration to him as well. While still playing under Coach Gaines, Smith wrote an article calling for his coach to retire in the school's newspaper. This would lead to a huge backlash for a young Smith who's known for its controversial remarks. Smith, however, didn't care that at the time the school chancellor wanted him expelled and that a bunch of people were asking how he could do such a thing to his own coach. In an interview, Smith explained how he told the coach he needed to retire, and if he didn't, he'd be writing an article about it. Coach told him to go right ahead, and speaking on the backlash of the situation, Smith told the Oklahoman in a phone interview, I quote, Coach Gaines was the one that stepped up and said, leave that boy alone. I told him it was okay for him to write. And I didn't get to tell them because my attitude was if you don't know how close he and I were and how much I love that man, then you don't know me at all and it's not even worth the time of day and I'm not going to explain it. In a tribute to the late coach, Stephen A only had kind things to say. I love him dearly. Um, there is no man on this planet earth that I admire more than he. Um, I look up to him, I respect him, I love him. He's a special man. Smith's big break came from his professor at Winston-Salem State, who also worked as an editorial page editor for the Winston-Salem Journal. John Gates approached Smith one day after class, claiming after reading his essay, he thinks Smith was born to be a sports writer. This would lead Gates to setting up an appointment with Terry Oberle, who at the time was the sports editor of the newspaper. After a brief five minute meeting, Smith was hired as a clerk in the sports department. About three weeks into his gig with the Winston-Salem Journal, Smith was given the assignment to do a story on the Wake Forest soccer team, who at the time were the third ranked team in the country. Without any knowledge on soccer, Smith went to the team's coach, Walt Chiswick, and told him honestly, he didn't know much about soccer, but he's trying to be a sports writer and this is incredibly important to him. The coach invited him back the next day, giving him access to him and his team to ask whatever questions Steven needed to ask over the span of the next three days. With all this information, the paper was able to write a two page story on the school's soccer program. According to Smith, I quote, after I wrote the piece, Terry Oberle called me into his office the next day and said congratulations. You are now the beat writer for Wake Forest Soccer. From there, my career took off. Now, Smith would also write for the New York Daily News covering high school sports before he would eventually be hired by the Philadelphia Inquirer in 1994 as a writer. According to Smith himself, in his first 13 years there, he would be promoted a total of nine times. It's quite impressive. He told the Oklahoman, I quote, I ultimately went from general assignment to beats on St. Joe's and Temple to backup writer to NBA writer to NBA columnist to ultimately in 2003 to general sports columns. That was ultimately my dream to be a columnist because I always knew that I wanted to have the license to express myself, my opinion as opposed to be restricted to just reporting. I wanted to express my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions. At the time, that was my greatest achievement, becoming a columnist. Columnist? Columnist. It's a hard word to say. In the same year, Smith would join ES. ESPN as an analyst for the network's pregame show to featured NBA games. In 2005, Smith would get his big break with the sports channel, getting both his own radio show, The Stephen A. Smith Show, from 2005 to 2008, and hosting the Quite Frankly with Stephen A. Smith Show from 2005 to 2007. Any man who scores 81 points in a single game is always welcomed in my house. Right now, only one man qualifies. You know who it is. Kobe Bryant's in the house. In 2007, Smith would be demoted from his position at the Philadelphia Inquirer, going back to the position of general sports columnist. Less than a year later, Smith would be fired from his job but rehired in 2010 after winning an arbitrator's ruling that he should be reinstated so long as he removed his political views from the cable shows. While all this was going down, he would also announce he'd be leaving ESPN in May of 2009, just a few years after his show, quite frankly, would be canceled. But it wouldn't be long before Smith would join Fox Sports Radio in November of 2009 as an on-air contributor. On January 4th, 2010, Smith would become a Fox Sports morning show host, replacing Steven Sasbin. To his credit, Smith predicted the big three, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, and Bosch, would link up in Miami during the 2010 free agency. But just over a year later, on February 1st, 2011, it was announced Smith would be returning to ESPN as a columnist for their website and host for one of their local New York radio shows. On April 30th, 2012, Smith would join First Take commentator Skip Bayless for a daily segment called Embrace Debate. This is what would really put Smith on the map for his argumentative and hilarious ways when debating Bayless. Sometimes, like you always tell me, you know, I love you, but I don't like you sometimes. Mm. Well, damn it, I don't mm. like you either sometimes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Skip it. But I like I you. That. I love you, but I don't like yeah. you. Following his return to ESPN, he would once again leave the radio programming while still appearing on first takes. He joined the Mad Dog Sports Channel on Sirius Radio in September of 2014, just a few months after he made controversial comments about the Ray Rice situation on first take, 
which would lead to a one week suspension for the outspoken host. But Smith would once again return to ESPN's on air show after leaving Mad Dog back in January of 2017. As many of you know, Smith is still a host on the popular ESPN show First Take, who he hosts with Max Kellerman and Molly Quirum since Skip Bayless left the show in 2016. Now, I feel like I messed up Molly's name. It's probably Molly Karam. Maybe it's Quirum. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Obviously, I don't watch the show. Although it seems Smith and Bayless had their fair share of bad blood, the two loved working together, and although they might not always see eye to eye, it seems they would always have each other's back, and it's always going to be love between the two of them. Uh, but he's my friend. He's my friend for life. Um, Skip and I had an incredibly successful run together. We were number one. Uh, we did that together, and you don't forget that. Now, as for the rest of the story, well, we're just going to have to wait and find out because, as you guys know, this is before they're famous. I'm pretty sure there will be plenty more headlines throughout Steven's career because the man always says what he wants, when he wants, and he'll always stand by it. I mean, the man can admit when he's wrong, which he has in the past, but for the most part, he stands by what he says. Now to answer our trivia question, Smith guest starred on the popular soap opera General Hospital with his debut back on February 2nd of 2007. It's believed his character, Brick, might even be making a comeback sometime soon, but until that happens, we just got to enjoy the clip that we have. Brick. There you go. Thanks for doing this. Your preferred client. I'm always happy when I get your call. So the office is all taken care of? Wife is sound ready to go. You'll hear every single word he says. Now I'm wrapping this video up, guys. My name is Jared Bronstein. If you guys have not subscribed to our channel yet, stay off the weed. -a. Also, check out some of our other videos that we got up here for you guys. Find me on social media at Bron7. You guys could always DM me your suggestions or drop them in the comments right down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.